Syria Peace Conference Geneva II begins with bitter speeches. Syria's government and main political opposition have traded bitter accusations as a major peace conference begins in Switzerland. UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon urged delegates to engage in constructive discussions, but neither side appeared prepared to abandon their positions. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry said there was, no way possible, President Bashar al-Assad could remain in power. The conflict has left more than 100,000 dead and millions displaced. The summit is discussing the Geneva II document which lays out a political transition plan for Syria. But the key issue is President Assad's future. It will hear from some 40 or so foreign ministers on Wednesday before direct Syrian talks begin in Geneva on Friday. And is the first time the Syrian government and the main opposition the National Coalition have met face to face since the conflict began in 2011. Raising Hope In an often angry opening speech, Syria's Foreign Minister Walid Mualem said some states attending the talks had Syrian blood on their hands and were trying to destabilize the country. Syria the independent state will do all that is necessary to defend itself, he said, and that nobody in this world has the right to withdraw the legitimacy of a president or government other than the Syrians themselves. Mr. Mualem ran far over the allotted 10-minute slot for each speaker, ignoring Mr. Bam's attempts to intervene. I have the right to give the Syrian version here, he said. The head of the, the National Coalition, Ahmad Jabba, said that it had not been the opposition's choice to take up arms. But, was the choice imposed by the Syrian regime? He called on the government to immediately sign the Geneva document and transfer power to a transitional authority. For the Syrians, time is now blood. Opening the summit, Mr. Ban urged all parties to engage, seriously and constructively, in the talks. Let me not mince words the challenges before you and before all of us are formidable. But your presence here raises hope, he added. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov said the talks, will not be simple, will not be quick. But that there was, a historic responsibility on the shoulders of all participants. He also repeated his insistence that Iran, whose invitation to the summit was revoked, should be involved. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry used his opening remarks to remind the conference the uprising had begun as a peaceful process, but said the government had responded, with ever-increasing force. We see only one option, negotiating a transition government born by mutual consent, he said. There is no way, no way possible, that a man who has led a brutal response to his own people can regain legitimacy to govern. Patience and persistency. International delegates to Geneva too have played down hopes of a breakthrough, saying the talks should be seen as the first step in a process. A senior U.S. State Department official told agents France Press. Everybody has to understand that this is the beginning of a process. And so there's going to be an absolute requirement for patience and for persistence. German Foreign Minister Frank Walters Thienmeier said, We must have measured expectations. We will not see peace triumph during these discussions. Mr. Mullum earlier indicated that Damascus was committed to working for the success of this conference so that it is the first step on the road to a dialogue between Syrians on Syrian soil. Earlier this week the UN withdrew its invitation to Iran to attend the talks, saying it had orally accepted the Geneva communique. The plan for a transitional Syrian governing body agreed at a UN-backed meeting in 2012, only to later fail to put the commitment in writing. Iran's President Hassan Rouhani said on Wednesday that the lack of influential players in the meeting meant he doubted its success in fighting against terrorism and its ability to resolve the Syria crisis. The Geneva II meeting has already failed without it even being started, state media quoted him as saying.